we think about meditation, which is the thing that's quite popular these days, mindfulness, almost we hear it as if it's some kind of mystical thing that you do that brings some magic, magical result of feeling better. But it's really not like that, you know. It really, really is not like that. It needs hard work. It's, it's hard work. And so there are, actually there are many misconceptions, I would suggest, in the world about mindfulness meditation. Okay, n Buddha doesn't own that word. Anyone can use that word. But if we're talking about it coming from the Buddha, we better be accurate about what the Buddha says. And there are quite a few misconceptions. So one of them is that, you know, you, you do mindfulness, it's like an alternative to a pill. And the only reason you need a pill is when things are getting quite bad, isn't it? Okay, if you're feeling happy, why would you meditate? We tend to think this. So it's only when things go wrong. So we think it's an alternative to a pill. Well, it's not, it's not like that. Secondly, another misconception is it's, it's, it's like a relaxation technique. There are, there are excellent relaxation techniques. Yoga gives brilliant ones. But this is absolutely not an, a, a relaxation technique. It actually demands enormous rigor and skill to focus your mind, to step out of your head, so you can begin to unpack and unravel the contents all these millions of thoughts that are raging on all day beneath the surface, which we call unconscious. Buddha's saying in the long term, we can unpack and unravel that stuff. The other, the other trouble is, is that we, um, we also, oh, another misconception is we tend to think that med meditation is to make all the thoughts go away. Well, you'll be very disappointed and you'll give it up pretty quickly. <laughs> because even, in, interestingly, in, in, the, in the texts, about this technique, you know, this thousands of year old technique, they say it's described in terms of nine stages of development of concentration. And they say actually in the text that the sign of success at the first of the nine stages is you think, you thought, you think your mind's getting worse. So it's, in a way, it's, you know, it's like when you first go to the gym, you go to the gym to get fit, to feel better. Well, you come home after the first day with muscles you'd never known you had. We know that, but the interesting part is we know that's a good sign means something's happening. Well, it's the same with your mind. But because we don't pay attention, and this is the major obstacle, I think, in our culture, because we do pay attention to the external, because that's where happiness is, and that's where suffering is, that's very clear, as far as we're concerned, then we only pay attention to the internal when it's coming roaring out of the mouth and you practically want to kill your husband, or you're lying in bed inert with depression and you can hardly move. It's only then that we notice what's happening in our mind. And this is one of the biggest obstacles. So the Buddha's approach is very practical. He says we can learn to become familiar with what's happening in our mind well before it gets to the emotional level. And that's the skill. That's what we need to learn to do. So that means literally learning to be our, we're able to be aware of what's happening. You're driving the car normally you know you're anxious you know this you woke up from the the evening bef from the dreams or whatever your yesterday's rubbish hanging over you're dealing with your breakfast the car the kids or this or that not paying attention to what's happening in here but you can feel it building and then the car jumps in front of you and you want to kill him you know oh.